Yes. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're doing amazing. I'm bringing on a special guest right now to interview really quick and have a chat about on all things dealing with this situation and many other situations in life. So let me see if she's on here. I'll bring her on. Oh, I see her. All right. I'm bringing her on. Oh, get ready. Yes. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so excited. We uh we we tried to connect last week, but you were a little under the weather. And so now we get to do this and I'm very excited. Have you done many Instagram lives? I know you've done some IGTV, but I've been doing, I mean, recently I've been doing a lot of guided meditations on Instagram live. I've been enjoying a way to connect and meditate globally with, with all of the community. So Amazing. that's how I've been using Instagram live more recently, especially given the context. Leading meditations. Yeah. Well, I know your meditations really support people in a big way. Is there anything you like to do before you um, do any type of speech, any type of work, any type of post? Is there a practice that you follow for yourself for like, 30 seconds or a minute that is a ritual for creating something or for before you go on live with your audience? Is there something you do for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so I'm going to answer this in two ways because my, the first answer is every day I meditate. I have a very yeah. consistent meditation practice. So every morning I use that time to center myself and go inward. So that's my just consistent practice. And right before I do anything, I just use that same technique of grounding myself, right? Taking a deep belly breath. Those of you who follow me know I'm always talking about it because I belly myself, breath. belly breath, come into my body, calm my nervous system, and then off to the races. Yeah. Is there ever a time where you're really nervous and your practice fails you? Your, your breathing, your meditation, your mental practice where it actually fails you? Or do you feel like you always feel like you at least you have enough to get through the next challenge? Uh, yes, I think the I, I am often very nervous about a lot of things, oh, really? Ma many of which that aren't even happening in my current moment. Why are you why are you nervous about things? Uh, a, a lot of and I think you and I have talked about this um, on one of the shows that we were on together, but the visibility me being seen and heard, especially at the scale that I'm now seen and heard is really challenging for my little girl inside my inner child who's you desperately wants to be seen and heard as many of us do most I of us know. do but so uncomfortable so i mean on a daily if i can sit i can sit there and go in my mind and picture all of the people listening to me or the speech i might have to give that's coming up and i could really do myself <laughs> into a tizzy um so fear can come up uh i don't let myself i feel confident now that i have the tools in that moment to pull my attention away and not to let it spiral out of control but also to regulate myself because you really need to. Yeah, because you were doing a practice one on one and seeing one person at a time, maybe you were leading some type of small group workouts, uh, not workouts, but sessions yeah, like yeah. a year and a half ago. Uh, but then in the last year, I guess 15 months, things have really taken off for people that I mean, how do people handle that when they get this type of audience quickly? Mm -hmm. Because there are some people probably watching that want a big audience right now mm -hmm. that want to have more followers or fans or people that are interested in their content. How does someone handle that? Because I think a lot of people aren't prepared for that. Yeah, when yeah. They, say they, they say they want it, yeah. but then when it comes, oh, all these people are looking at me now. Mm -hmm. what, do I, what do I do? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I wasn't expecting or prepared for the, the growth of my platform in the least bit. So I was one of those people who went on, I knew I wanted to utilize social media, but I had no expectation or anticipation of how quickly. And it can be really destabilizing. Um, for me, the things that I always remind myself are twofold. One is just staying connected to my authentic truth, right? Staying connected to myself, to what I know to be true, and to speak my story into the world. If I can just use that as my guidance always, I feel like I'm doing a good job. Yeah. The second thing that I always remind myself is as the message gets in front of more and more people, I know this to be true because I do this myself, we're all subjective. We're all filtering messages through all of our filters, all of our beliefs, all of our conditioning. So the negative feedback that I could get as scale happens, which sometimes it happens, people 
tell me their opinions or say hurtful things about my work, my ideas, myself. Um, and I remind, I, I, I say the word depersonalize. I really make it a practice of separating myself, of reminding myself that this is another human that's viewing the world through their filters. There is no right. truth um, so that I don't have to own because that's, I think, the other thing that comes with growth quickly is you open yourself up to many different opinions. Um, so and just reminding things. yourself that their opinions can go a long way. Yeah. How do you manage the opinions of others if they're judging you, whether you have a small audience or you're growing quickly, how do you manage it when people are attacking you or when they're saying negative things, when it's you care deeply about your work mm -hmm. and you feel like, no, this stuff is good stuff. I've been doing this for decades. I've been working hard and helping people. So how, how do you manage that when, when yeah. you got that yeah. judgment? Well, so kind of starting at the depersonalization piece, right? That, that means I've already had some separation from my feelings, right? So the, the ability to say, okay, here's a really nasty comment. Maybe I can understand where this person might be coming from. Maybe I can't, but I, can, I don't have to own it. But yeah. to do that, I need space. So before I get to that ability, sometimes I have to give myself the space because I'm human and some things that I have read have been hurtful to me. Um, and because I am invested, um, you know, in the human that I am, in the work that I do, it can be painful. So in that moment to create that space, sometimes I have to put up a boundary and I have to walk away from the comment. Mm -hmm. I can't answer it right then because if I'm answering something in an emotionally activated state, I'm going to be probably more reactive and not maybe as eloquent or not able to not own whatever is being said about me. So that, 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 that's almost part, part two, right? When I, once I have the space and I can separate and I say, okay, this isn't maybe necessarily about me. I do listen to mm -hmm. feedback. I want to just throw that out there too, because the gift of having an outside perspective is it's outside of yourself. So I don't just throw everything everyone says into the, oh, this doesn't apply to me category. Of course, I would be negligent. I would lose opportunities to grow. But what I do is I, tr I, I, I look at it I look at it objectively and I try it on to see if it fits because another truth is reality hurts sometimes. And someone could give me some hurtful feedback that on the surface I don't want to own. But if I look underneath of it, maybe I need to. Maybe that is helpful. Maybe that perception is another way of seeing me that I could modify. So I don't throw all negativity out, but I give myself that space. If I'm emotionally activated, I do my own work to calm then I look at it, I try it on for size. If it fits and I don't want it to fit, I use it in the future. Yeah. Um, and if it doesn't, then I just put that, it's not about me and I keep it moving. <laughs> I think this is one of the most challenging things probably in my life that I had to learn how to practice, which is to let go of emotional attacks where I felt like someone was attacking me emotionally. I think I talked about this with you where I've learned to practice and maybe this is the wrong way to do it, but I've learned to practice to literally because whenever I feel hurt, I always associate my ego and something that um, is not me. It's just like a part of me. And so I try to take that ego that is hurt and I try to separate it, like you said, to look at it in a, in a different way. I try to imagine the ego coming out of my heart where it feels hurt mm -hmm. and put it over here and just kind of look at it and actually just say, okay, they're talking to this thing over here that actually isn't me. It's about them, you said, or maybe it's irrelevant mm -hmm. or maybe they're triggered by something. And so I try to not let it affect my heart so I can have a calm mm -hmm. reaction as opposed mm -hmm. to defending myself. Why do we feel like we need to defend ourselves so quickly when we're under attack emotionally or mm -hmm. some trigger happens? Why do you think that is for most yeah, of us? That's I love that. I love that visual. Thank you for sharing that, Lewis. Because, I mean, when you say the word attack, that is, that, that is a very accurate word to use because that's what it feels like in our psyche, if you will, in our mind. Our ego is an agent of protection mm. against perceived, really important word, threats, right? So what happens is to simplify ego. We all have one. We all, we all need one. We've needed one when we were younger much more desperately than we need one now. But essentially what the <laughs> ego is, is it's a story, we, story we've come up with based on our lived experiences, based on things we've heard about ourselves. It's almost a story of us is the way you can think about it, right? If I were to say, I'm Nicole, I am. However, I would describe myself as a function of this only part of me. So I love that visual because that's what an ego is. And everyone listening, it is only part of you. It is, a, it is a story that you've come to understand believing it's you and it's not. Mm -hmm. You are the awareness, the consciousness. If anyone out there listening, listen to our last chat. We talked a lot about that consciousness. You are the observer of your stories. You're that deeper place. 
within you. So what happens is we do feel under threat. We feel like that self we know, and this is happening a lot, I think, in just kind of global communities, right? Everyone, it's like this us versus them mentality where I feel quite literally threatened. The self that I know, right, is, is, is under threat. So I do feel like I have to react and I have to fight to preserve who I think I am, whether that's battling, you know, in, in a, in a, you know, in an argument for, you know, whose mm-hmm. belief is right, or just kind of defending of the self. That's quite mm-hmm. literal what we feel we're doing or what our mind feels we're doing right. in that moment. What's, someone asked a great question. What's the difference between what we really are or who we really are and the ego? Yeah. So who we are is the, the, the entity, for lack of a better word, that can observe the ego in action. So when I said earlier, our ego doesn't go away. We're not fighting it to eradicate it. What we really want to do as beautifully as you worded it earlier is to learn how to observe it. Mm. Because something that I think we all hope to be the case, but is not the case, we imagine we're going to get to this place where nothing's ever going to trigger me. And maybe we can (laughs) have some moments of state, but things might trigger us. Even monks get triggered. Yes, that ego might get kicked up and I might, you know, feel like I have to defend myself. But what is important is to be that observer behind that ego. So my ego is throwing this tantrum and it wants to do whatever it does, kick and scream. I love to check out, dissociate, right? So I'm watching all that happen. That's who I am. So whoever asked that question, I, I, I am the observer, to use that language, of my ego. And I, the person behind my ego, is the person who holds the ultimate power because mm-hmm. that is the entity that gets to choose what happens next? Most of us are living very reactively, though. We kick and scream or dissociate because we haven't created that space that I was describing earlier. Yeah. Someone was asking, how do we, this is a great, we talked about this in our interview. And guys, I wanted to bring uh, Nicole on to talk about some additional things that we talked about in our interview. If you want to check it out, there's a link below. You can see it because Nicole is just one of the wisest leaders of our time who is constantly serving at a high level to educate people, to help people heal, create boundaries, create better relationships with themselves, their childlike self, their parents, their intimate partners. And you've got to be checking her out. If you're not following her, you've got to check her out. And uh, we did a, a longer interview we can check out. But there was a question here that is about, um, <clears throat> someone said, how can we come out of our past, which is killing me? So the story of our past, I think we identify with our past. This is our memories. These are the experiences we've had. And we, a lot of times, will hold on to these memories and experiences as this is who I am because I went through this. This is my experience. It's not a lie. It's who I am. But I think sometimes we hold on to it too much to where it makes us uh, hurt a lot. It makes us suffer Mm -hmm. more. So how do we uh, acknowledge our past and those experiences, those memories, those moments, some amazing, some challenging, and how do we not allow them to hold us back in the present and in our thinking of our future self, which you talk about? Yeah, absolutely. It's a really good question. So a lot of us do over-identify with our past, things that happened to us, and we wear it as an identity, as a who we are. And as crazy as it sounds, there's a grieving process that a lot of people who go through a healing journey will talk about where we're grieving that old self. Even if it's a self that didn't serve us, even if we know, you know, that we were living negative consequences. Why do we grieve something that doesn't serve us? Because it's familiar, right? You and I have talked about this, I think, before. I talk about familiarity a lot. It doesn't have to be rational. It's not. It's just what we're used to. And any, this is where threat comes back into play. Anything that is deemed unfamiliar by this ever present subconscious of ours is immediately perceived as a possible threat. So then we go into defense. So this, so outside of, I have to mourn all that, which was this identity label of illness, if you will, or whatever it is, constriction, restriction, not having the life that I want, what happened to me, whatever, my past, right? I have to mourn that. But another, I think, problem that arises is we are living our past outside of even that identification we are Mm -hmm. living our past in our habits our daily habits right just the practices the way we carry about our day we are reliving our past in our beliefs that we repeat about ourselves about others about the world some of which were never ours to begin with right Mm -hmm. and we relive our past by the way we cope with what's happening now so all of that becomes a remnant so we are a walking remnant of our past. So it is really hard to shed that 
outside of the identity piece, right? It's really hard to shed that because we're living it day in and day out. Even if we have the perspective to know that this thing hurt me and isn't serving me, I'm getting up and I'm still living probably those same behaviors that came from that period of time. I'm still have, reciting the same beliefs that might have come from that exact event that I'm calling to mind that I want to rid myself of. And I'm coping likely in the same way. So that's why healing has to be holistic. We have mm. to peel back all these layers of conditioning so that we can actually create a future self that's different. Holistic. What does holistic mean to you? Holistic means to me all of it. I mean, I, I now come to know that us humans are a mind, a body, a soul. We are all interconnected, all of those aspects that are working together. And a lot of the times, if the areas <clears throat> that we're stuck and we're struggling, whether that's physical symptoms, whether it's just negative emotion, uh, relationship patterns, whatever it is that we're struggling with, origin we're also interconnected there's a driving force there's an imbalance in one of those areas in my mind in my body in my soul in all of it an imbalance is causing the things that historically we've called illness and that mm -hmm. historically we've determined were not changeable illnesses meaning and i fell into this category i just thought i you know if i check <clears> the box <throat> of anxiety i had some diagnoses i had me some generalized anxiety i had me an anxiety disorder right I thought that that was a box I was going to check forever. Um, now we understand that there's so much incredible change that is, that is actually possible, that we're not just like stuck the way that we thought we are. Mm -hmm. If you guys are enjoying uh, this in any way, go ahead and leave a yes or a thumbs up or a heart or something just so uh, Nicole can know if you're enjoying this. If this is your first time hearing about her, then uh, go ahead and heart it up and leave a thumbs up. If you've already been a big fan of her, then uh, share the thing that you've resonated with the most of her content since you started following her. And uh, we'll, we'll be able to go back and look at some of these comments. I want to ask you a few more questions if you've got a little more time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, one of them is um, about um, someone said something really good. Let me see here. Hold on one second. Really struggling with a negative mindset, shifting away from assuming the worst is um, going to happen and it's one of the worst, it's one of the most difficult things for me right now is assuming the worst is going to happen. And I can only imagine for people who have had a story of the past that all bad things happen to me, or the luck doesn't work out for me, or it, you know, it only works out for so long for me until something happens. How do we get out of that mindset of, you know, the half glass empty, I guess, where things aren't going to work out our way. And the ruminating and worrying about it, mm -hmm. which is holding us back a lot. Just the energy of the negativity is holding us back. So how do we kind of shift some of those things? Yeah, absolutely. And this goes back to why, let me just explain why we oftentimes, well, why we imagine a future just in general is because the mo anything past this moment in time is a big question mark for all of us humans. Yes. None of us know what happens no guarantee. next. None of us. That's yeah. it. We don't know. So that brings up uncertainty right? That triggers fear because uh, something scary could happen next. So in service of protection, anything in that's future based triggers that possible threat because the thing that is around the corner could be actually threatening. This is all very much evolutionarily based, right? So my brain attempts to imagine scenarios in an effort to convince myself that even if that bad, this is where the worst case, right? I like to imagine the worst case because if I dry run the most terrible thing that I imagine could happen, I can feel like I'm more prepared if that thing happens. So it's like a form of mental rehearsal preparedness. However, I used to do this all the time too. We spend way too much time doing it. You know, maybe one dry run, if we want to make a case for mental rehearsal, that could be helpful. But I'm sure the person who answered this question, and most of us are not just, oh, okay, if that bad thing happens, I would get that. And then, okay, check, moving on. No, we're probably just stuck in that loop of that very bad thing happening. The present moment is the gift that we all have always. Mm -hmm. So using in those tools, whether or not you're practicing meditation or consciousness or senses or belly breathing, anything that we can do to pull our attention from our mind, from that hamster wheel of worry of worst case scenario and drop back in, focus on what's happening in the moment. Are you watching something you know, on television? Are you doing the dishes? Are you on a walk? Can you grab your attention to something that's here now? Mm. It's not tomorrow or worry based. 
the more consistently you practice that because your thoughts aren't going to just say, oh, you're busy. OK, I'll leave you alone and I'll just log these worries. for tomorrow. <laughs> no. So it's going to be a more and I say this to a lot of people, you know, will get discouraged. Oh, well, I brought my attention back and they're the worry of thoughts are uh -huh. there again. Well, they're going to be there again. But with the mental muscle, you're actually firing your brain in a new way. And our brain is neuroplastic. It's just that just means it's trainable. Just like our muscles, our brain can actually change. So the more you as effortful as it is in the beginning, pulling your attention back, what am I doing? What's here now? I'm safe right here. I'm safe right here. I don't have to worry about tomorrow right here, right now. You're teaching your brain so that in the future you can be a little more efficient at doing yeah. that. But get out of the worry to simplify the answer. Get out of the thoughts that are producing the fears because you're never going to be able to predict what happens tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you're right, Lewis. You're spending time, energy, and you're probably causing yourself a whole lot of stress, so maybe much. even a panic attack. Some of us, I used to do this, right? And nothing's happening. And it's, it's not going to prepare you. It's not going to prepare you as you think it is. Is this why you started creating the uh, journaling practice for your future self? Because you know, why did you create that? And what is that, what, what is that for people that don't yeah. know about that? So thank you for bringing that up because that really does harness this, this concept of mental rehearsal. Um, the reason why I created it is because I, I noticed just in my life, in my practice, and as I was beginning to attempt to change, I noticed how hard change was. So through what I've come up with, those of you who are using the journaling props, those of you who are not yet, if you jump on my bio and my link tree, you can sign up for my email address. So it'll come right to your inbox. And every what, day- What's it called? What's it called? It's called Future Self Journaling. Yeah. What it is based on is an agent of change, right? So if I wanna be different today around one area, I have to learn to practice. I have to show up differently. So the act of intentionally journaling, mm -hmm. right? So if it does a couple of things. If I sit down every day, whether it's the morning, I do mine in the morning, doesn't matter when you do it. If I sit down every day and I set an intention to change, mm -hmm. I'm conscious now, right? So I'm now not in that old autopilot that would have done my day the same exact way it's done it for however many years. I'm sending, I'm sending a message that I am now intending to do something different. That might be the difference between whether or not I intend to make, if I make that change later in that day. Right. And then the beautiful act of writing, like we were acknowledging earlier, the brain being neuroplastic, as I'm writing as if the change already happened, so you'll see in the prompts to write in the present tense. So for me, my, the first thing I worked on was breaking my habit of dissociation. So I wanted to work on being more present in my body and in my moment. I would write my journal as if I already was. I'm mm. present all day wow. long. I, I, I notice where my attention is and when it's not, you know, in the present moment, I use my breath and I bring my attention back in my body. And I set so writing as if it's true, your brain, our brains do not know the difference if, if that's really happening yeah. in real life or not. So that's where <clears throat> mental rehearsal comes in. So now you're actually priming your brain so that later that day, that intention, right, that I said, Oh, right, I'm supposed to be present right now. And oh, I'm not okay. I've already primed how I'm going to get back to presence, right? I'm coming back into my body, I'm using my breath. And here I am. And mm -hmm. then if I practice that consistently over time, this is not a magic journal. Things don't happen overnight. It's a tool to create the change that flash forward, however long for me, breaking my habit of dissociation took me a long time. Right. But staying consistent on that, I can't even tell you the last time that I've completely dissociated because it's been that long. Yeah, because you're just consistent with that practice. I'm consistent with practicing. practicing. You sound like a, a trained athlete who visualizes and yes. and sees the future result. This is what I would do in high school yes. and college. It's just mm -hmm. like, you know, we had great teachers teach us this practice of the day before the game, we would walk on the field, we would visualize ourselves catching the ball, scoring the touchdowns, winning the game, celebrating as if it's happened already. And we're just going to go follow the motions tomorrow. Yes. And I think that's an important practice is when you, you know, when we follow the teachings like you're talking about here, and a lot of people, I saw some people saying, where can we follow you? Just click on the top, uh, I think the button's up in the top left, you'll see uh, Nicole's uh, Instagram page, you can follow there, click on her bio link and get the journal when you sign up for our email list. But when we follow this practice daily, like you said, this is not a, well, I'll do it when I need it, you need to do it when you don't need it. Mm -hmm. That's when it becomes a habit or routine where you don't react to negativity, you respond to a greater future self that you want to create for your life. And I think when you become a mental athlete every single day for your emotions and your body and your presence, 
you can become unstoppable in this way when you train yourself. So this is why a lot of people have been following you and, and taking the action on the journals because they're seeing incredible results mm -hmm. of these are simple practices for complicated emotions. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's hard, like you said, to change and let go of the past. Um, just stories that you constantly tell about yourself. It's hard. It took you, I don't know, probably years. It took me many, many years. And I'm still evolving and growing yeah. from things that I still don't like about myself that I want to improve. And this is all part of a practice. And the more you can be present, the more you'll be able to uh, disassociate those stories or those bad memories or those bad reactions that you don't want anymore, creating intention for what you do want to create. Every morning I try to focus on um, the good and the bad, what I want to create in the world that day, what my mission, what my vision is, how, who I want to come from, my way of being, my energy, my love, all those things. And I also think about, well, what if all the bad things happen that I don't want? Because I think some people say, well, only think about good things happening. Mm -hmm. But I actually think about, okay, what if something really bad happens? And, and I'm not in control of it. Something bad happens, or even just people cut me off in the street and yell at me, or someone says something nasty online, or, you know, or something really bad happens tragically, how am I going to respond? And I actually mentally rehearse mm -hmm. the bad moments. You know, we associate emotion to any moment. I really like to think that all moments are neutral and we give it association and meaning. Mm -hmm. But how will I respond? And I try to practice that as best I can. So when it happens, I can quickly disassociate and say, okay, it's happening. Mm -hmm. And go back to my mental rehearsal of how I want to respond. As yep. opposed to, I want to be anxious and scared and worried and frustrated and re you know, reactive. Because that's not going to serve in that moment. Mm -hmm. So... That's something yeah. I try to practice. That's incredible. And I just want to piggyback on that and acknowledge that that does not mean that you're invalidating mm -hmm. the feelings as well. Because I think we can get confused. And I'm the first, like, not tending or not just being aware that I'm having a feeling that something's being stirred up in me. You know, if we just deny that, then we also create a situation where we get ourselves mm -hmm. stuck. So I just want to clarify because I think that's beautiful. And I love yeah that example and the way you kind of walked us through that Lois. So thank you. And, and that doesn't mean that what everyone's feeling in that moment is invalid. That's right. real Feel that the feelings over here. And I can still choose this show up as my future self. Yeah. I want to be responsive. Yeah. Feel the feelings. And, and if you want to be angry, feel the anger. I'm just saying if there's a tragic moment yes. and you've got to respond with yeah, beautiful. Some clarity mm -hmm. and peace in that moment, then you've got to be willing to take action and be that leader. 100%. Um, and then you can be angry and scream in your pillow later. Yes. And follow uh -huh. that practice. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of people, I've seen a bunch of comments, people saying they're going to get your journal, which is exciting. You guys awesome. need to follow this practice because it is powerful. And um, I'm, I'm curious, is there a way we, we can show people? Because a lot of people are asking, well, how do I, how do I handle this? How do I let go of this fear and anxiety? Can, we, can, we, can you lead them through a little one or two minute meditation or demonstrate yeah. demonstrate some of the breathing techniques that can just get people back to a present moment as opposed to the past worry or future anxiety yeah absolutely i mean i could just take us through a you know kind of one to two minute how to use our breath and our senses to drop back in experience perfect and... okay awesome all right are we ready let's do it all right so finding wherever everyone is sitting uh sitting laying whatever you're doing you can just settle in. <sighs> Those of you who are maybe feeling comfortable, you can gently close your eyes. If you're not feeling safe in the moment to close your eyes, you can simply gaze gently at the ground, find something soft in the distance to focus on. What we're really doing is just quieting ourselves and dropping in to this present moment, regardless of what might be going on around us in this moment. So as we're settling, I want to take one big deep breath. I want to breathe deeply down into your belly, feeling your belly expand with air. Hold the breath for just one second at the top. And then I want you to release nice and slowly, allowing all of the air to empty. And then one more deep breath down into that belly, feeling it expand. 
pausing at the top. And then we're gently releasing. Settling in more and more. You might still hear the sounds of the room around you. Maybe now some thoughts are starting to drop into your mind. That endless to-do list. The phone call you didn't make. The worry. If those thoughts are coming, as they likely are, simply note that you're thinking. I want you to visualize putting each of those thoughts on a leaf. Dropping whatever thought is coming onto your mind, onto that leaf. And visualize that leaf gently floating down a stream, mm. off into a distance. as you turn your attention back, following your natural rhythm of breath. Sitting here for a moment, dropping those thoughts on those leaves, visualizing them gently being carried downstream, turning your attention always to that beautiful act of breathing dropping back into your body, from your mind into your body. Hmm. Those of you struggling to come back into your bodies, just spend a moment focusing on your feet on the floor, focus on the contact point, your back upon the bed. Use your physical body to ground yourself and bring your attention away from the thinking mind, allowing those thoughts to travel out of your awareness, coming back, turning your attention always to your breath, to your body, to your home. All right. Gently, you can expand your attention again, wiggling your feet, wiggling your toes, dropping back in. Those of you who have your eyes closed, coming back, expanding your attention and entering this moment in time. Mm. Oh, just two minutes is all you need. Two minutes, yeah. So. Wow. Those of you might be feeling a little different, sense your energy, if it shifted, if it changed, maybe it didn't, but the, really the tools there that using, cultivating, right? Who are we? We are that awareness. We are not our thinking mind. We are that centered space, that quietness, that peace, that safety. It's behind all of this, all of mm -hmm. our stories, all of our external worlds. I know a lot of external worlds are in disarray at this point, but if we can cultivate, right, dropping those thoughts on that leaf, using our body to ground back in, we can really rebuild and reestablish that connection with who we are. So wow. if you practicing guys, that. <laughs> yeah. If you guys enjoyed that little meditation, then go ahead and type in uh, me or a heart or prayer hands. I see uh, Noelle saying, yes, uh, very grateful, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you have something, someone has asked, do you have a recorded video of this or audios where people can listen to you do five to 10 minute meditation? I three, do. Three. Um, I think I have one on my uh, YouTube channel. So I have a YouTube channel out there for those of you who have not been following me at the Holistic Psychologist. I think I have one saved there, maybe um, loaded up onto a SoundCloud. Um, every month as part of the Self Healer Circle membership, there's definitely guided meditation. So all my self healers out there um, every month that there's a guided meditation that gets up there. But I actually, in the next week or two, I'm probably going to do another pop-up live meditation. Mm. So anyone who's listening, if you want to follow along, uh, I, meditations are my jam. So yes. I'll be putting them up as preloaded guided meditations and or doing live ones really consistently. So join along. I'd love to meditate with every one of you. And if you are a part of uh, the self healer circle, go and put the hashtag self healers. Is it healers or healer? Healers, yeah, self-healers. Self-healers, go to put the hashtag self-healer yeah. in a comment right now so, uh, so Nicole can see. And, well, and if, you, if you aren't a member yet, 
this is something you need to do and get on the wait list for. I think you're opening it up soon. It was, yeah, we were supposed, I was going to reopen on the 1st of April, but put a pin in it for a month, hopefully let things okay. settle and give everyone a bit of time to regroup. But, but if, we'll you be click, if you click on Nicole's uh, Yay, image up here. Brittany. Yay, Brittany. Yay. If you guys click on Nicole's uh, image up here or the name up here, you can go to her uh, link in her bio on Instagram sign up for her newsletter you'll get the self uh the future self journal it's called future self future journal. journal yeah you'll get that for free which is amazing millions of people do this around the world and uh you'll be on the wait list i think as well or she'll notify you of the wait list for when it opens up in the next month which you've got to get in this it's where nicole does meditations she's teaching this stuff uh and deeper video lessons right uh, mm -hmm. on on there what else do they get when they're part of this monthly yeah. Self-healer circle. Yeah, every month it's it's a kind of a <clears throat> self-contained topic of healing where on topic either myself or really generous experts from the community come in and, and will present and do a virtual workshop on the topic, really giving the tools. There's worksheets that we work through as a group, a collective together. Uh, once a month, it's always me. For an hour, I come on, I answer any questions about the healing journey mm -hmm. um, within the community. There's guided meditations, playlists. There'll be pop-up events coming. So it's, a, it's really a way to connect with the global community that we are now very much global of self-healers people doing the work, understanding these concepts, being able to speak the same language. So for me, this is just, I, I've, this was such a passion idea that now is a, a, an entity in the world, this whole virtual community of self healers. Yeah. So this is a, a gift and I'm, I love watching it and shaping it and growing it. So. Yeah, that's great. And a lot of people are saying they're getting the journal right now. Uh, they're, they can't wait for, for uh, next month for the, uh, the circle to open up. Um, so make sure you guys get the journal, get on a new, oh, someone said, uh, I just saw text it. messages, make sure yeah. you get on her texting platform. If you go to her profile again, right up here, you can click on the text. She sends out weekly inspiration on how to, again, create healthy boundaries in your life, mm -hmm. how to manage stress and overwhelm, how to deal with relationships that are, might be challenging for you in your life, how to heal trauma from the past, all these different things that I wish they would have taught me when I was 10. Yeah. Um, she's doing it now. So big thank you for this. Um, and one, one final question, because there's a lot of feedback coming through, a lot of people loving this. I'll do one final question. What um, is the best way to stay connected in your mind right now without having anxiety of being isolated, if people feel alone and isolated? What's the best way you've seen people stay connected during this time? Uh, I, I, anytime I hear the word connection, presence comes to mind. So it, whether, even if it's virtually, I know most of us are, I've been seeing virtual hangouts happening. So it's different if I'm on the phone with you, Lewis, and I'm mm -hmm. here and I'm in, in presence, connection can happen. If I'm on the phone with you and I'm worrying about this other thing or tomorrow or the worst case thing that could happen tomorrow, right? it's really going to be limited in how much we're feeling fed from our interaction. So anytime I hear the word connection, my mind says, be present, mm. right? carving out the time, even if it's virtually, you're going to leave uh, an interaction with another human that you've you know, had in presence. You're going to leave that feeling so much more fulfilled and fed and maybe even supported if that's what we're looking for than if you were half there or not there at yeah. all. So yeah. present. So whatever it is, even if, people are feeling compromised that they can't, you know, be in person, or maybe they aren't having the virtual exchanges with others. When you're having them, the more present you can be for both parties, the more fulfilling and connected and supported we're all going to, and love Amen. we're all going to feel. Yeah, that's powerful. And um, a lot of people are saying, can you post this full interview somewhere? Uh, maybe I'll try to take a couple screen <laughs> video screen grabs of it afterwards and share them for you guys. But uh, there's a full interview that's really powerful that just came out last week with Nicole. And that's why I wanted to bring her on here to let you guys know about it because she gave so much wisdom, uh, a lot of strategies, tools, and information on how to deal with a lot of this stuff. If you go to the link there or you go to the School of Greatness podcast, you can listen to it. And um, we've had her on twice now and they're both amazing. You can go to YouTube, watch it there, but I recommend subscribing to Nicole's YouTube channel. What's the, what's the link for your YouTube? The Holistic Psychologist. The Holistic Psychologist yeah. everywhere. Instagram, YouTube, and and bug her on Instagram to post more meditations. Hound her 
to to create more of these things on video because she's amazing on video and I want her to do more of this. So if you think she should be doing more of these lives uh, for her channel and YouTube, then let her know on her Instagram uh, page. Uh, uh, uh. Noted, it, noted, it, noted. It. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, if you come over and follow me, I'm always asking for what content do you need? What do you want to see more of? So definitely come over, you know, yeah. hound me, let me know. I when I say this is a community and this is, you know, we are all co-creating this movement and mm -hmm. the membership and all of it together. I believe that. So I look yeah. to you, the community, and I'm all ears all of the time. Yeah. I'm seeing a bunch of people say, what's the podcast? The podcast is called the school of greatness. Again, if you go to the link below, lewishouse.com, you can find all the podcasts there. So check it out. Uh, Nicole, anything else you want to add? I don't want to keep your time too much. Anything else you want to share? This is no, amazing. I just, I sincerely thank you as always, Lois. The feedback again that I'm getting from this latest episode, you are incredibly gifted and I endlessly feel supported by you. So thank oh, you. My Sending pleasure, love my to all of my community. I saw all the healers in here. I appreciate you guys all supporting. We're all supporting each other and it's just a beautiful thing. That's it. Nicole, you're a gift. We appreciate thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you for you. taking the time. Make sure you guys go follow her right now. Go do some meditations. Get the journal. She's going to blow your mind. So thanks, Love Nicole. Love you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Love you all. We'll see you. Okay. Wow. I feel more grounded, centered, connected, loved, um, present, all those things. If you felt like that was powerful for you. And if you would like me to do more of these, again, I've got this podcast you guys have been seeing this podcast for seven years. Some of you have yet to check it out. who have been following me on social media. But I'm telling you, I do interviews like that with incredible leaders like Nicole. And if you want the full interview of us doing over an hour of information like that, then the link is right here, uh, lewishouse.com slash 932. Or you just go to the podcast app anywhere you listen to podcasts and um, go to School of Greatness on Spotify or Apple and you can listen to the episode. It was just last week, so to be in the top right there um, with Nicole, Jack, Dr. Joe Dispenza was the other day. There's some incredible leaders teaching these strategies, these techniques, sharing powerful stories, helping us heal our body and our minds, helping us become greater versions of ourselves to manifest the dreams that we want, to manifest more loving and connected relationships with family members, with friends, with loved ones. That's what this is all about. Uh, my mission is to help people really become greater. So hopefully this is uh, helpful for you guys. Uh, Joe Dispenza was awesome as well. Appreciate both of your existence. Thank you guys very much. Putting you aside. What was the greatest part of that interview with uh, Nicole you just got? What was the biggest thing that you just learned from there that helped you the most? Go ahead and type in something so I can make a mental note for the future as well. Interviewed Daniel Habif. I actually just messaged Daniel the other day. We've been buddies for over a year now. So he's he's learning English. So I'll have to get him on soon because he wants to do more English content. Presence was something that someone said. It's a powerful reminder. Being present uh, brings clarity and peace. Yes. Self-love and care how to let go of the past, the way to get out of anxiety. Self-healing starts with consciousness. The meditation was a powerful part for you. Very cool. I'm glad you guys enjoyed this. The leaf, that was great for me, the leaf. I've done many different meditations from lots of leaders. Uh, you know, uh, I have a meditation teaching certification. I've done through classes in India. I've done all these things. But the leaf analogy was it's like the worry just floated away right then in that moment. So that was really powerful for me if you guys enjoyed that. Um, sending anxious thoughts onto a leaf on a stream. Yeah, that was really cool. So again, thank you guys. Love all your interviews. My favorite was with uh, the FB negotiator, Chris Voss. He is amazing talking about negotiations in your life. We are all, we are our be own best self healers. Yes, that's right. How to become limitless. Cool, guys. Uh, will this interview be available to watch after? Well, I'm going to record some of this for sure and share it out. But if you go to this link right here, lewishouse.com slash 932, you can take a screenshot of this right now if you want. It's right here. It should be pinned. 
that there is a full video interview that's an hour long with Nicole that we just posted last week over on our YouTube. So it's on that page. The full audio is there. If you listen to podcasts, if you watch YouTube videos, you can watch. We went through some of that stuff and a lot more about healing the past, the trauma, how to deal with boundaries, everything. So go watch the full video interview we just posted last week. It is a game changer. You can see the link right here. And, um, or you can just go to School of Greatness anywhere online. So appreciate you guys. Love you. Sending you lots of love. Sending you lots of healing vibes. And sending you, sending you just positive energy and knowing that you are strong enough to get through any adversity. You are built with something so strong deep inside of you that will get you through this moment, this hard time, and many hard times in the future. So just know you may not trust, you may not have seen evidence yet, but I'm telling you, adversity is a good thing. When you learn, you're going to learn more about yourself during this time than when times are really good. And if you can think about anything and reflect back on anything, it's to know that the lessons you learn now are going to support you for your greater future self for many years to come. So I hope you guys, <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> someone was saying, <clears throat> excuse me, you're killing it with the questions with The Rock the other day. Yeah, you know, for most of you who've been following me for a while, <clears throat> I've been wanting to interview The Rock for seven years since I started the podcast. He's the number one uh, person I want to interview. And um, he did a live the other day, and I asked a couple of questions, and he answered them live. Um, so we're going to post a couple of those answers here soon. But it was, uh, it was fun. Love Nicole's journal. Thank you, Lewis. Yes, guys. Thank you guys very much. I have got a training call coming up very soon with my uh, inner circle, with members of my community who are passionate entrepreneurs looking to build their personal brand, looking to build an income, doing the things they love the most. So I'm going to jump into that right now and do that training here in the next 45 minutes, talking about the power of copywriting for your personal brand and how the words you use will help attract the right ideal customers, and the right audience, the words you write about, the words you say, the words you use. If you're interested in that, we're doing a live training, literally in 45 minutes. You can go to lewishouse.com slash now to sign up for that and jump in in the next 45 minutes. I'm bringing in Rory Vaden to teach the uh, 15 principles of effective multimillionaire copywriting on how you can replicate this for the rest of your life and use this same formula. So go to lewishouse.com slash now and check that out and be a part of our community of thousands of passionate entrepreneurs who are looking to grow, looking to make a bigger impact in the world and make a full-time income doing the things they love the most. Check it out, lewishouse.com slash now. Love you all. Appreciate you. And I'll see you soon.